Advanced F2L is this term that gets thrown around, but I don't feel like a lot of people really know what this means. There have been a lot of videos about advanced F2L, and while I think these videos are all good, they go over a lot of tricks for advanced F2L, but they don't talk about exactly what advanced F2L means. Unfortunately, I'm guilty of this too, but today I'm gonna to be talking about exactly what advanced F2L means. So this one I'll talk about very briefly, but the first difference between advanced F2L and beginner F2L is cube rotations. With beginner F2L, once you find your pieces and then you would pair them up by using the slot here that they go into so that you don't break up any other slots you might've solved. Then once you pair them up like this, you would insert it into the front like that. With advanced F2L, there are two differences here. One is that you can use any unsolved slot in order to pair them up. So I don't need to set them up like this. I could set them up like this and do that, which breaks up this slot. So this only works if this slot was unsolved. So by keeping track of which slots you've already solved, you can avoid breaking up any ones that you've already done. The next thing is once I pair these up, I can insert it into the back without having to rotate like this. So I don't always need the slot at the front. If it requires a cube rotation, I might as well not cube rotate and instead just insert it into the back. So these are some basic differences, but they're super important if you want to reduce cube rotations and reduce the amount of unnecessary moves you do. The next key difference between beginner F2L and advanced F2L is the process you use to pair up pieces. With beginner F2L, there's an extra step in the beginning. So if you have a corner up here and an edge in here or vice versa, if anything is in a slot, then you have to take it out first. So I would take it out like this and then I would just continue and solve this pair. So then I'd follow this up by pairing them up like this. And then as a third step, I would then insert it. So for beginner F2L in the worst case, which is pretty common, you'll have to do three steps, top layer, pair them up and then insert. With advanced F2L, you always keep the step where you insert it because you have to do that, but you can join all the previous steps together. So how it would work for this case specifically, there are often multiple ways to do it, but one way you could do this case specifically is by putting the corner over here before you take out the edge. And if you do that, then that causes them to already be paired together by the time the edge comes out. So you have to know which ways you can take it out so that they pair up together. Now, before I go into the details of how you should be doing that, it's not totally memorization, there is some logic to it, but before I go into that, I'm gonna talk about the other difference, the last difference between beginner and advanced F2L. So with beginner F2L, even if the pieces are both on top, if they're touching each other like this, then often you have to split them up first. So that is an extra step, splitting them up, before you go into however you normally pair them, followed by inserting. So with advanced F2L, again, you do one thing instead of both of those steps. So I'll briefly go over all the cases where they're touching and what to do, because there aren't that many of them. And then I'll get back to the other point I was talking about. So for this case, you move the corner over the edge and just do U prime, and then that sets them up. For this one, what you do is you move the corner up and then you do U2 and then come back down. And that results with them already being paired together. Then you just insert. For this case, it is a really bad case and it's a bit long, but what you do is put it over here, insert the corner into the slot like this, move the edge over and then take the corner back out and then that makes them paired together. And lastly, for this case, what you do is instead of hiding the corner this way, like that, because that hides the edge, you just hide the corner this way instead, and then move the edge away. And then that pairs them up. Now, going back to the previous point of when you take pieces out of a slot, how do you make sure that it comes out paired with the other piece already? So there are a lot of cases to go through here, and I do have an advanced F2L PDF, which you can find in the description of that video. But the problem is if you don't know why the cases work that way and you don't have some sort of internal logic for it, then it just looks like a list of algorithms and that's ridiculous to learn. So I'm gonna go over the logic of the cases here. So starting off, if white is on top and you find the edge here, if you put the white sticker on top and they match like this, then this one's a little bit obvious. You can just take it out because they're already kind of paired up. Then you just insert it. Now, if you put the piece on top and it does not match, now keep in mind, it doesn't really matter where the edge is, it could be anywhere, but if it does not match, then there are two ways you can pair it up and you can kind of think about which one's easier to use depending on uh, the situation you're in. So first move the edge away from it so that they're both still on the front. And then you can do one of two options just depending on which one ends up working out better. One way is to insert the corner here like that, move the edge back over here to the side and then do that again. And then that pairs them up. The other option you have is doing what's called a sledgehammer. And if you don't know what that is, it's a short trigger that goes like this, R prime, F, R, F prime. So make sure in either case you use the hand that's holding the edge here. So I did everything right-handed, but if I was facing this way, so they don't pair up and then I move the corner this way, then the edge is on the left side this time. So I would do either of them left-handed. So either like this to pair it up 
or like this. Now instead of the white corner stickers on the side, then again, put it on top here to see what the relationship is, and you'll either find that some stickers match or no stickers will match. So starting with the case where the stickers do match, what you wanna do is like if you were facing this, you turn the sticker so you can still see it. So like not that way because it's gone, but like this way instead, and then push the edge behind the corner like this. And then that gets them to pair together. Now, if you had to push it the other way instead, there is a way to pair them up as well. And that is by pushing the edge behind the corner as well, except go a little further like that. And then that also pairs them up to insert. And lastly, the case where if you put the corner on top of the edge, the colors here don't match, then this is the last case. And there are, again, a few ways you can do this. One way is by putting the corner over here behind it, just like same as before, except you move the corner the other way instead. So onto this spot and then that pairs them up. And again, if they don't match, there's one more way you can do it, and that's just by moving the corner. Instead of just here, you move it all the way over there. This also works. And then do the same thing, just move the edge over here. And that pairs them together. Now, what if you have a corner in a slot and the edge is on top? So what we're gonna do is compare the front color of the corner here with the top color of the edge. Now, if they match, then what you do is you wanna face the white sticker and then put the edge on the side. So like on the side that the corner's on. Then take out the corner, while pushing it towards the edge. So take it out, push it towards the edge, and come back down. Now, if instead the color on the corner does not match the top here, then you wanna do it the other way. So instead of putting it over here where you face white, you put it over here where you don't face white. And then this time you take out the corner the other way. So you move it up, then instead of moving towards the edge, you move away from the edge. And then now they're paired together. Lastly, if white faces the bottom here, then just find the side color of the edge instead and match it to the side color here. So these two match, then what you do is move the edge away from the corner and then bring the corner up like this. And then now if they didn't match, then you would put it on the other side so that they do match and then do the same thing. So move the edge away and then move the corner up like this. One thing that I didn't talk about in this video is finger tricks because that doesn't really apply to what moves you're doing, it's just kind of how you do the moves. And also I didn't wanna load this video up with too many things, but if you wanna learn about advanced finger tricks to make sure that you're not taking up too much time turning, then you can watch this video that I'll link up here. So just a quick recap of what we talked about. When you find both pieces and you have to pair them up, you can use any unsolved slot in order to pair them up like that. And then you can insert them into front or back depending on which one's more convenient. So instead of rotating, you can just insert this into the back like that. Next, if the pieces are both on top and touching in a way that you can't use like your regular beginner F2L, then you should memorize exactly how to pair those up really quickly. There aren't that many cases, so memorization should be fine. And lastly, if you have a piece on top and a piece in a slot, then make sure that you can compare them in some way that you know instantly how to pair them up as you take it out. Let me know if you have any questions. Thanks for watching as always, and I'll see you guys next time.